Come ride the little train that is rolling down the tracks to the junction. Forget about your cares, it is time to relax at the junction. Lots of curves, you bet, and even more when you get to the junction. Petticoat Junction. There's a little hotel called the Shady Rest at the junction. Petticoat Junction. It is run by Kate. Come and be her guest at the junction. Petticoat Junction. And that's Uncle Joe. He's a moving kind of slow at the junction. Petticoat Junction. Sneak thief, remanded to our custody by the Justice of the Peace of Hooterville. Here's your bread and water, jailbird. Oh, hold it, but what is this nonsense, and whose idea is it? And never mind the last part, I can guess whose idea it is. You'll whistle a different tune when you get the picture. I snagged the plum job of keeping the criminal here, for which the county pays us, a cool four dollars a day. How's that for turning a profit? The only thing you're turning is the shady rest into the big house. Now you're getting the idea. The elevator here is a cell block. If we don't watch out, the broom closet is solitary. You just get out of there. Go on, open it up. I never thought I'd see Kate Bradley shirking her civic duty. <laughs> Turning a vicious criminal loose on innocent citizenry. Eustace Pockle is not a vicious criminal, and you know it. And why can't he go to the jail in Pixley? It's closed. Sheriff Crandall's on his vacation. That's why I was able to persuade Sam Drucker to remand the prisoner to our custody. You're in love with that phrase, aren't you? Well, what I'm in love with is the loot is bringing in. Think of it, Kate. Four dollars a day. He's in for five days. That's sixteen dollars. At least. But he cannot stay here in the hotel with our guests. I don't mind. I like people. <laughs> well, that wasn't quite what I was worrying about, Eustace. He... Uh... Well, if he has to stay here, let's put him in a room. I'll get the key to number seven. Kate, you don't understand the criminal mind. It's one thing with the guests taking towels, but Eustace will steal the keyholes out of the doors. <laughs> Eustace, you wouldn't. Eustace, you wouldn't do that, would you? Heavens, no. You have my word as a kleptomaniac. <laughs> well, you see, Kate, he even admits what he is. Yeah, I see. Lock him up, Uncle Joe. Now you're talking. All right, you. Get it. If you're thinking of anything funny, forget it. Compared to me, Sheriff Crandall is about as tough as Loretta Young. Do you get the picture? Yes, Loretta. <laughs> oh, you'll sing a different song. You just wait until I... <laughs> is this what you're looking for? Smart apple. There's nothing worse than a crooked criminal. <laughs> Kate, you're going against the book. Prisoners are supposed to have nothing but bread and water. Oh, Uncle Joe, that went out with Paul Muni. And what are those? Security measures for transporting a criminal from one place to another. <laughs> Take your hat off. that off. I tell you, Kate, Eustace shouldn't be at the table with the rest of us. If this gets around, we'll be getting the overflow from Leavenworth. <laughs> Take them off. Hi, everybody. Good evening. Hello, girls. Where's Betty Jo? Oh, she'll be down in a minute. Uh, let me help you. Oh, thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Like I said, Kate, what kind of an example is Eustace for your daughters? 
I think he's a fine example. But if you object to the company, you could take your plate and eat in the elevator. <laughs> Help yourself, Eustace. Thank you. Oh, here's some peas, Eustace. Have some mashed potatoes. Thank you, girls. Kate, you're upsetting the whole penal code. Wasting this expensive food on a vicious, desperate criminal. <laughs> Uncle Joe, Eustace is bringing in four dollars a day. Gee, this is wonderful food. Thank you, Eustace. Do you think we can get Sam Brucker to stretch my sentence to ten days? <laughs> Just the generator, folks. I'll have it fixed in a minute. No, it ain't, Kate. Nine o'clock, lights out. What do you mean, lights out? That's the way it is in the big house. Nine o'clock, the lights go out. All right, everybody, up to your rooms. Just a minute, folks. Uncle Joe, put the lights back on. Kate, you're interfering with the due process. If Eustace was in the Pixley jail right now, he'd be in pitch dark. The Pixley jail doesn't have to worry about guests. Put the lights back on. <laughs> Sorry about this, folks. Well, they said this was a rather unusual hotel. Uh, come, Stanley. We were about to go to our room anyway. We were? Uh, yes, we were. <laughs> Hello, Mrs. Benson. Mr. Benson? I thought you girls were studying. <laughs> we were, but we got a lucky break. The lights went out. <laughs> Here's an extra pillow for you. Oh, no, you don't. Oh, yes, she does. Kate, you don't know what you're doing. What are you doing that for? Searching for hidden weapons, files, saws. <laughs> this is your own niece, Betty Jo. How do you know she ain't an accomplice disguised as Betty Jo? Let's see the mole on your left shoulder. <laughs> Kate, you're aiding and abetting a criminal. Don't you see? He can tear that pillowcase to strips and make a rope ladder and escape out the window. Why would he need a rope ladder? He's on the ground floor. Kate, you don't understand the criminal mind. While you're wondering what he's going to do with the ladder, he'll be out the back door and on his way to Buenos Aires. That's in Brazil. It's in Argentina. Oh, they moved, huh? <laughs> well, he'll be escaping to one of them places. Oh, no, I won't. I'll be a good boy. <laughs> Thank you, Betty Jo. Uh, pardon me. Do you have a match? A match? No smoking in the cell. Hmm. Ponderosa Lacrimosa. My brand. Paco, where'd you get this cigar? It was in the pocket of this robe. Hey, he's got on my robe. I gave it to him. It's the one cousin Emily sent you that you said you wouldn't wear to a dog fight. I give up. How can a man run a decent jail with you women pampering the prisoners? <laughs> or a fun house. Oh, for heaven's sakes, Uncle Joe. Quiet, lady. All right, you. Get in that cell. Rest of you, keep your distance. Stay right where you are. Ah. Oh, you. Sorry. You terrible man. Come, Stanley, before you do something you'll be sorry for. Yes, I love you. <laughs> and please have our bill ready. We're checking out in the morning. 
These, we would like our bill. Mrs. Benton, surely you're not serious about checking out. You had a reservation for a whole week. When we made our reservations, we were under the impression this was a family hotel, not a headquarters for the Mafia. <laughs> oh, you don't have to worry about Eustace. That's right, lady. You hear that, Eustace? You're harmless, and don't you forget it. It may be all right for you people, but I have certain valuables that are irreplaceable. Oh, well, if that's what's worrying you, we can keep your trinkets in our burglar-proof rust-resistant safe. Yes, y you can put all your valuables in the, uh, uh, my, that's an unusual pin. Oh, thank you. Isn't it stunning? I picked it out myself for Stanley to give to me. <laughs> yes, lovely. Now, if you put your jewelry in here, you won't have a worry in the world because this safe is as sturdy as the rock of Gibraltar. <laughs> I just hadn't gotten around to fixing it yet. You see, we're right in the midst of one of our giant reinforcement projects, and uh, I'll run to get my tools, and I'll have it fixed in no time. Yeah, don't do it on our account. We're not staying as long as that fiend is here. Pardon me, dear, but that fellow doesn't look much like a fiend to me. He looks like one of those poor unfortunates your Committee on Rehabilitation tries to help back home. <laughs> There's no use talking to her, Mr. Benson. I guess your wife's one of them fly-by-night rehabilitators. Operates on a shoestring. <laughs> Uncle Joe, why don't you go get your tools? Okay, she says she could... You're not helping. <laughs> Eustace isn't really bad. All, all he needs is thoughtfulness and consideration, which... I'm sure you have an abundance. <coughs> That's true. As a matter of fact, I have a heart as big as all outdoors. <laughs> you poor man. To prove I'm a superior human being, tolerant of weak-willed unfortunates, I'm going to continue to stay on at the hotel. <laughs> uh, Stanley? Pick up our bags. We're going up to our room. Oh, thank you, Mrs. Benson. You'll never regret this. <laughs> now, Eustace, let this be a lesson to you. The next time you get an urge to take something that doesn't belong to you, remember Mrs. Benson and her faith in you. Gee, maybe I ought to give her back her pen. <laughs> oh, no. Eustace, how could you? Well, you said you liked it. I like a lot of things. Well, if you make up a list, I'll see that you get them. Mistress, I know you mean well, but when Mrs. Benson finds out that her pin is missing, she's going to make trouble for the hotel. Gosh, I never thought of it that way. But it's no problem. I'll sneak her back to her room before she realizes it's missing. I'm pretty good. With them in the room, you're not that good. If you can get them out of the hotel, I'll zip upstairs and be back in my cell in a minute. Here's your key. You. Mr. and Mrs. Benson, we need you. It's time for our regular physical activity period, so let's limber up the old reflexes by trotting down the stairs. Cadence, count, up, two, Chuck's dance, but uh, they're used to country folk, but they're kind of shy of strangers. Well, maybe we can try again tomorrow. Uh, sure, sure. Oh, no, no. Uh, come to think of it, tomorrow's the 23rd. That's when the beavers move in and the woodchucks head south. But maybe next year. <laughs> well, we've all had a wonderful constitutional, so why don't you go upstairs and relax in perfect contentment? Oh, here. Come, Stanley. Mm. It was a cinch, Kate. I put her pin back on the dresser right next to her makeup box where she's sure to see it. Good work, Houston. And here's the key to my cell. Oh. oh. 
Believe me, there's no question you are truly rehabilitated, and I'm proud of you. Thank you, Kate. You know, I know how much it must have hurt for you to put something back. It's gone! It's gone! What's gone? My beautiful traveling alarm clock. Aunt Sophie gave it to us for a wedding anniversary, and it's disappeared. Mrs. Benson, don't get excited. It's probably someplace in your room. I'll help you look. Oh, Eustace? Stanley, bring those bags back down. <laughs> you asked for this, buddy. Ordinarily, I run a minimum security prison here. But you proved you couldn't be trusted. I was a bad boy. Yeah, but you ain't going to get a chance to be a bad boy anymore. These babies will slow you up for good. How do they feel? All right, I guess. Not too good for dancing. <laughs> you can count your blessings. I didn't put you in solitary. Get in there. <laughs> This is Sheriff Crandall. Get me Sam Drucker. Right away. Oh, ring your head off. I'm going to finish this here display. Uh oh, that's a hotline ring. Must be something important. <laughs> Sam here, Sarah. What's the trouble? The sheriff? Well, put him on. Hi, Sheriff. How's the fishing? Never mind the fishing. Fine friend you are. What are you talking about? You know what I'm talking about. I just got the dope from Newt Kylie. You got some nerve sentencing Eustace Pockle to five days at the Shady Rest. Well, it ain't my fault. He didn't have the five bucks to pay the fine. Anyway, you were up at the lake and... That Eustace. He has all year to do his shoplifting. And what happens? He waits till I'm on vacation. Well, Sheriff, there are some crooks you just can't trust. <laughs> there are some justices of the peace you can't trust either. Giving Kate Bradley my four dollars a day prisoner money. Now, hold on, Vic. You gotta remember, this ain't Chicago or New York. We only got one sheriff and one criminal. So there's only one way out. Next time you go fishing, take Eustace with you. <laughs> How much longer has this sentence got to run? Uh, three more days. Three days times four bucks, that's twelve dollars. Just about cover the fishing gear I lost in the lake. I'm coming in and transferring Eustace to the Pixley jail. You ain't sore, are you, Sheriff? Oh, no, not a bit. In fact, I'm going to give you a nice big printing order. Oh, fine, Vic. Uh, what kind of order? Campaign posters for a new Justice of the Peace. <laughs> oh, he wouldn't do that. Maybe he would. <laughs> What about them leg irons? Sorry, they didn't fit. Well, you're lucky he didn't take the elevator with him. No, it's not panic. Eustace may be tricky, but he forgot one thing. He still has Joe Carson to deal with. I'll get the shotgun head the posse. Your shotgun? Why, you act like Eustace was a vicious criminal. He escaped, didn't he? You gotta take immediate action. Oh, my gosh. Shotgun's missing. Well, Eustace must have taken it with him. Oh, my gosh. That means he's an armed man. Look, what's the rush? Sheriff Cran will be back in a couple of days, and let's, let's just stay out of it. Well, what do you know? Instant chicken. <laughs> How can we stay out of it? We let the prisoner escape. If we don't find him before the sheriff gets back, we're all in trouble. <laughs> And Sarah, remember to tell everybody the minute they see Eustace to call Sam Stewart. <laughs> Bye. There, that ought to do it. No, it won't, Kate. The sheriff's due back in three hours, and that tricky Eustace, he could be hiding in some meadow or the woods or Scoville Swamp, any place. Uncle Joe thought of that. 
Steve Elliott is up in his crop dusting plane right now searching the valley. Joe, I'm now flying over the Fred Zippel pig farm. No living thing visible except three pigs eating out of a trough. Over. Steve, better take a close look at them pigs. One of them might be Eustace. He's awfully good at disguises. <laughs> Somebody ought to be calling in. Take it easy, Sam. Well, it's been over an hour and we haven't heard a word. Hello? Who's this? It's Agnes Bunker. Hello, Agnes. Where'd you see him? Well, Eustace Pockle, of course. Well, if you didn't see him, what are you phoning in for? <laughs> Agnes Bunker, ain't you got no more sense than to order chicken livers at a time like this? <laughs> Well, for all I care, Mrs. Bunker, you can... <laughs> Agnes, this is Kate Bradley. Could you call back later, dear? Uh-huh. Right now, Sam's chicken livers are in an uproar. <laughs> Control hand car to pilot. Control hand car to pilot. <laughs> Give me your 204. I'll be glad to, but what is a 204? That's cold. For what do you see down there? Oh, sure. I see a 308. What's a 308? That's code for nothing. <laughs> Joe, I'm coming in. I've already crisscrossed this entire valley. There's no sign of Eustace. And I'm out of fuel. That's no reason to come down. Now listen, here's your new search pattern. Steve? <laughs> Are you listening? <laughs> hey! Yeah? Uh-huh. Okay. Oh, that was Joe. Steve combed the whole valley and didn't see a trace of Eustace. Well, there's only one thing for me to do. I'll go over to the sheriff's office, wait for him, and tell him the truth. Well, I'd close up the store and go with you, except for one thing. What's that? I don't want to get killed. <laughs> it's my responsibility. He escaped while he was in my custody. Uh, Kate. Hmm? You've been a real good friend. Been? <laughs> since I broke out of the hotel. I had a heck of a time getting in here. Busted all my fingernails, picking the lock. And we've been searching. Steve's been up in his plane. People have been phoning. Oh, Eustace, you're too much. Kate, I was ruining your hotel business. I knew the sheriff would be mad at you. You were all so good to me. The least I could do was bust out. You know something, Eustace? You are a scheming, conniving rascal. But somewhere in that crafty little body is a heart as big as this room. That Kate Bradley. <laughs> Sarah, get me Kate Bradley. Oh, yes, I forgot she doesn't have a phone. Hi, Sheriff. Hi, Kate. <laughs> Sarah, if she doesn't have a phone, how come I'm talking? <laughs> There you are. Well, you've ruined my fishing trip. Not only that, you've horned in on my legitimate rake off for boarding prisoners. Sheriff. On top of all that, I just found out that you let Parkle escape. Sheriff. Now I got to give the taxpayers the added expense of finding him. Sheriff, can I have a drink of water? Eustace, you shut up until I'm ready. <laughs> Eustace Parkle. I think that Eustace deserves more than a glass of water. Sheriff, why don't you phone the Pixley Diner and have them send over a strawberry float? <laughs> okay, Kate. I'll do it as soon as I repark the squad car. Not a good example for the town having the sheriff double park. Stay tuned for the Ed Sullivan Show, next on TV Land. Petticoat, jump 
function.